Hello and good afternoon, CTS 267, Section 840 students for the Spring 2017 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the CCMP route course, and this afternoon's video tutorial uh, is going to be a quick tutorial on HSRP to continue our conversation uh, about the security audit that took place where I, I currently work. And the security team came over and said, we've we found this gaping security hole with HSRP uh, and the way that HSRP is configured. And I said, well, uh, can you give me a little more information? And they said, yes, our auditing tool is telling us that in order to pass the audit, you need to change the HSRP priority to the highest value possible, which is 255. And you need to do that on all of the HSRP active or in other words, primary routers, and that that will secure your HSRP installation uh, from compromise. And so I kind of scratched my head and I said, well, are you aware that by setting the priority to 255, uh, that that's not going to achieve what you think it's going to achieve? And so I labbed that up for them and we had that conversation uh, about just a misunderstanding of the semantics behind how HSRP uh, is configured or how HSRP functions. And so I wanted to walk through that for you again to make sure that you guys had a very clear understanding that the priority value, while initially uh, the differentiator, if there's a tie, the number one tiebreaker is highest IP address. So while they're sending the hello packets and they're trying to determine who is going to be the active slash primary, uh, if the priorities are the same, what ends up happening is the election will go to the router with the highest IP. So here we are in router one, and let's go ahead and get into global config and say do show run interface fast ethernet zero zero. And you can see router one has an IP 192.168.1.1. So let's go ahead and get into interface fast ethernet zero zero. And we're going to say standby one. Uh, and we'll say that the IP will be 192.168.1. And we'll just use 254. We'll say standby 1 preempt and then standby 1 priority. And let's follow along with what they are recommending. So we're going to say priority 255. So when I say do show run interface fast Ethernet 00, if I were to grab this information here, and copy it and come over here to router 2 and let's go ahead and say debug standby events and go into fast ethernet 00 and paste that same information in let's see what ends up happening here oops we got the the prevent com uh, the preempt command in there so it may have already elected itself so you can see router 1 had already elected itself the active router. So when router 2 came online, router 2 is going to be the backup. And so you can see here, we went from speak to standby, and ultimately we end up as the standby router. Because again, router 1 had already elected itself. So at this point, when I say do show standby brief, what do we see? We see that the state of this router is the standby. Right? Who is the standby? The local router. So in other words, router 2. Who is the active or the primary router? And that's router 1. So now we have a priority of 255 here, and then we also have the priority of 255 on router 1. So how can we confirm that the highest IP will hold on, uh, or I should say the highest IP is going to be the tiebreaker. Now remember, it's the highest interface IP. So the interface IP for router 2 is 192.168.1.2. And then the uh, IP for router 1 is 192.168.1.1. So let's do this. Let's see what happens when I come over here to router 1. Let's save our config. And I'm going to reload the router. And don't worry, I'm going to pause here while we allow this to reboot. So let's see what happens when router 1 goes offline and then comes back online. So let me pause and we'll be right back. All right, so router 1 completed its reload. So let's get logged in and see what we've got here. Now remember, we're anticipating that this is going to be the primary router. If we were tracking an interface, 
we would expect that when we came back online that we would be the active router. But take a look. Who is the active router in this scenario? In fact, let's go ahead and pull the pin online here. So the active router is now, whoops, sorry, active router is now router 2. 1.2 because again router 2 also had its priority set to 255 and you can see here router 1 is now relegated to the standby role so simply setting the router 1 priority to 255 and thinking that that's going to be enough and let me draw the land segment here that that is going to be enough for for router one security or for the HSRP security setup we've just proven to be false because if I had a rogue router and I'm going to introduce that router here in a second if we had a rogue router over here router three right and that is a terrible it's not supposed to be let me oops sorry let's change this here there we go so let's start fresh here so if we're looking at router 1, and there's our LAN segment, router 2, and the priority on router 1 is 255, and in a normal setup, we would put this at 254. We'd want it to be lower, so that way when router 1 comes back online, it can take back over as the primary router. So now what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a rogue router over here, and if this rogue router, router 3, set its priority to 255, and for whatever reason, router 1, the link goes down, or the if it's tracking, maybe there's another serial interface out over here that it's tracking, and it decrements that priority value, this is going to be our new active router. And so I'm actually going to... I'll just set up a loopback address to sort of simulate some sort of WAN connectivity and we'll track that interface. And let's see what happens when that interface goes down. But first, let's bring router 3 into the fold, our rogue router here, and let's go ahead and see what happens. So we're going to pull router 3 up. And remember, initially the election has already taken place. So when I go into interface fast ethernet 0, 0 and say do show run interface FA00, and I say standby 1, uh, IP 192.168.1.254, standby 1 preempt, standby 1 priority 255, and I, sh and I say show standby brief, well, take a look. This is the scenario that we have right now, is that router 1 is the standby. Router 2, because it elected itself as the primary and has a higher IP address, right, is going to end up being uh, the active router. But take a look at what just happened here. As soon as I bring router 3, the rogue router online, with a priority of 255, He's sending out hello packets. And the standby, who was router one, says, I see, I'm seeing the stand, I'm seeing your packets, your hello packets, and I realize, and we can see it over here, that he went from speak to standby when he came up, but now he's just gone to listen. Because you can only have one standby and one active router in an HSRP configuration. The rest of them will be in the listen state. So again, there's still uh, legitimate participants in HSRP, but they're just listening right now. They're not going to step in and take over uh, as the primary. That would be the role of the standby. So we've already seen that setting the priority to 255 is not going to be enough. It simply does not guarantee and doesn't provide any level of security uh, that would lead you to believe that by setting the priority on the active HSRP node, or the node that you want to be the active node, by setting that priority to 255, it simply does not achieve any level of security. Because take a look at where we're at now. The standby is unknown, the active is router 2, but we know who the new standby is. 
router 2 would actually tell us. There you go. It's actually right here. It's router 3, the rogue router that we introduced. Now, the other sort of issue that I had with, with the statement that we need to raise the priority to 255 was that this assumes that the group number is also known. Uh, and if you're using HSRP version 1, you would need... Uh, you would have to go through 256 group numbers, 0 to 255. If we were running HSRP version 2, which chances are we're going to be running version 2, you have 4,096 group numbers that can be used. So someone would have had to have been doing some shoulder surfing, and as I commented in class, if it's not shoulder surfing and they're on your router and they're able to do show run, you have much bigger issues than the HSRP priority value being 255. Uh, because you'd have to be in privilege exec to run the show run command. So you'd have to type enable to get into privilege exec. And from privilege exec, you can go directly into global config. And so at that point, I think your concerns about a priority value of 255 are sort of superseded by the fact that someone uh, has gained unauthorized access to the router itself. Okay, so router 3 has been configured with a priority of 255. It has now taken over as the primary router. And so when the security team looked at me and they said, well, then what do you recommend? And I said, well, we should continue to do exactly what we're doing to secure the HSRP installation and that is use HSRP authentication with the, with the um, MD5 hash. And that's going to provide us sort of a guaranteed level of security. Again, in order for someone to pick up what the hash is, what the key string is that we're using, they would have to have access. They'd have to be able to get onto the router. And again, at that point, the HSRP authentication is probably the least of your concerns, right? So this is what I showed them. I said, this is actually what that tool should be checking for. And let's come over to router one and let's say do show run interface fast ethernet zero zero. Uh, and you can see, so let's go ahead. We'll leave the priority at 255. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to say keychain and we're going to call it HSRP. Um, I guess we'll just go with... Uh, yeah, I can't, let's say ABC, keychain ABC. All right, and then I'm going to say key string, or actually key one, and then key string is just going to be ABC123. Right, so very, very straightforward. But the name of the keychain is just ABC. So now I go into interface fast ethernet at zero, 00. We're going to say standby one, authentication, MD5, key string, and then the name of our key string was what? I'm sorry, not key string, key chain. I apologize. There's two choices there, key string and key chain. So key chain, and the name of our key chain is what? It's just ABC. So I'm going to put this on here. We should see some error messages uh, popping up here shortly, and there they are, indicating that we're getting bogus authentication, right? So again, authentication is configured on router 1, but it's receiving hello packets that are lacking the authentication uh, that it is configured to provide. So when I say do show run interface fast ethernet zero, 00, you can see that for group one, right, I've got the authentication set. I've now moved do show stand, oops, sorry, do show standby brief. You can see that the active is now the local router. Well, let's go to router two. We're going to make a couple changes here. Do show run interface. Actually, it's right there. So the priority, let's fix that. We're going to say standby one priority. And again, let's humor the security group, and we're going to set this one to 254, right? Although, again, we know that it's not going to make a difference. What really makes the difference here is the authentication. So let's go back to keychain ABC, and we're going to say key one, keystring ABC123. Interface fast ethernet zero, 00, standby 1, authentication MD5 keychain, and the name of our keychain is ABC. So if I were to say show standby brief, you can see that HSRP here on router 2 is now ignoring 
the hello packets that it was getting from router 3 because or ignoring the hello packets that it's seen go out between 3 and 1 because it now knows that 3 is not doing any kind of HSRP authentication. So we've moved show run interface fast ethernet 00. You can see the priority is 255 so show standby brief. So we are the standby router 1 is the active and even if router 1 were to go down Authentication is not configured on the rogue router, router 3, and so that is, this is going to provide the level of authentication and the level of security that we're actually looking for. Again, remember, setting the priority to the highest value is good only until there is an event of some kind where that router with that highest priority goes down. And at that point, the rogue will be able to step in and take over as the primary. And we saw that it will actually preempt the standby node to put itself, the rogue that is, to put itself, the rogue, into the standby position so that it is ready to take over as the primary active HSRP router. And really, what we need to do is, again, uh, show run key keychain is that show run keychain show run keychain hold on show run key I could have swore I'm drawing a blank right now or not show run I'm sorry show keychain or is it key keychain there we go I was typing show run I just wanted to show keychain so when we look at the keychain, you can see that, again, we can see what the keychain is in plain text. But the assumption is, is that the individual doesn't have privilege exec access on the router. If they do, again, you've got a whole host of bigger concerns than the HSRP priority value. Or what the authentication key string that's being used with your keychain uh, is set to. So again, uh, remember that the HSRP priority value, while a good determining factor, is not going to be uh, a security measure that you want to implement thinking that it's going to prevent a rogue router from being able to step in and take over. All right, well, hopefully this made sense, guys. Uh, again, very interesting uh, that the security tool provided uh, feedback to move the priority to 255. Uh, when what I believe it should have, excuse me, should have said uh, was that it should, we should implement HSRP authentication with MD5, which we're already doing. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys tomorrow night.